Good afternoon, everyone. Breaking right now, a SWAT situation has forced schools into a modified lockdown in Westmoreland County. Police surrounded a home about four hours ago. And they are still trying to get to a man inside and trying to get him to surrender. Channel 11's Alyssa Raymond is live in North Huntington to give us a closer look at what's going on right now. Alyssa? Yeah, that's still what's going on. They're trying to convince this guy to come out of this house. So if you zoom in here, Paul, we could see the state police and that armored car right behind there trying to convince that guy to come out of this house. They had uh, the bullhorn going. They were talking to him from the outside, asking him, you know, to put down a weapon and come out. They're not trying to hurt him. They're trying to help him. Like you mentioned, this has been going on since around 8 this morning. Uh, police still haven't said what started all of this, but they did have a helicopter up. They had a drone up. We were also here as state police brought in some even heavier equipment. And like you mentioned, Norwin schools, they decided to close uh, for K through fourth graders because of all of this. Hillcrest Intermediate and Norwin Middle School, they're on a modified lockdown, meaning no one could come or go from the school. They're calling it a uh, community threat at this point. And then just about 20 minutes ago over a loudspeaker, we heard the suspect's mom say, I want you to give yourself up. She also told him from outside here. She loves him. We spoke to some people who live in this neighborhood. They were standing outside watching for a period of time, watching to see what was happening out here until, you know, state police told them for their safety that they better go inside uh, just to make sure nothing happens. Um, here's what one of them had to say. My wife uh, said that she heard a noise that it was the police. So I looked out our bathroom window and we can see that there were three police cars saying, uh, Randy, put down the weapon and come out. And then every so often they would just keep repeating for him to put down the weapon and come out, put down the weapon and come out. So we've heard a couple flashbangs go off. You could see state police still trying to convince this guy to come out. They've been talking to him on and on for about four hours now, just telling him again that they are not here to hurt him. They're here to help him. So we're going to stay out here. We'll, of course, break in if anything happens or if we get any information confirmed from police, because at this point, like I mentioned, we still don't know what brought them out here to begin with. Reporting live in North Huntington, Alyssa Raymond, Channel 11 News. Breaking out, President-elect Joe Biden is talking about his COVID-19 task force. We are listening in, and we will bring you the breaking details coming up in this newscast. Meanwhile, a big surge in the number of coronavirus cases in Allegheny County since Saturday. The health department is reporting 530 new cases in the last 48 hours. The test results are recent, all within the last week. The number of coronavirus cases across the country topped 10 million yesterday, according to Johns Hopkins University. Pennsylvania Health Secretary Rachel Levine spoke in the last 30 minutes and says the number of deaths in the state is also climbing. We are seeing an increase in terms of the number of deaths due to COVID-19 than we saw in the summer. It is not at the rate, thankfully, that we saw in the spring. Dr. Levine also says they're starting to see a rise in cases in nursing homes once again. We will be looking into that for Channel 11 News at 5. The rise in COVID cases has forced schools to make changes from here at the University of Pittsburgh to high schools across Allegheny County. A shelter in place order is now in effect at Pitt's main campus. Channel 11's Mike Holden is in Oakland for us to explain what that means for students. A mandatory shelter in place order is now in effect here at the University of Pittsburgh. Officials say this is extremely concerning, but they're now working to flatten the curve and protect everyone before they head home for the Thanksgiving holiday. The University of Pittsburgh has moved to the elevated risk posture and students must now shelter in place for the next two weeks. Pitt says there have been at least 40 confirmed cases of COVID-19 since Friday. The university suspects these cases are linked to large scale gatherings and parties that happened over Halloween weekend. There are strict safety protocols in place to stop the spread of the virus, and it starts with this. Students should only leave their rooms or apartments to attend classes, labs, or clinicals in person. Group work should be done virtually. They can pick up food at campus dining locations, but only carryout is available. They're still able to study in the library, but they must social distance. They can still go to work when necessary. And finally, they can only shop for essentials and medical needs. Students say this is yet another adjustment during a very difficult time. I think the coronavirus is much more serious than, say, the flu. Um, 
I think it's definitely worth taking seriously, not only for like the symptoms at the time, but also just there's still effects that linger after you've been infected with it. And really, I don't want to experience those effects. And university officials say it is imperative that you continue to wear your mask and social distance. They say that is crucial in this ongoing fight. In the meantime, we're now asking university officials about the additional measures in place and their message to students who aren't necessarily taking this seriously. That's all coming up for Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting in Oakland, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. For the next two days, North Allegheny High School students will learn from home. The district says it doesn't have enough teachers to cover all the classrooms. The high school will operate on a two hour delay. All other buildings remain open. The district has seen at least four positive cases since Wednesday. This morning, 350 students and 47 staffers are in quarantine. That's out of more than 8,000 students and more than 1,000 teachers. North Allegheny does not believe COVID is spreading inside the high school. They issued the changes they say out of an abundance of caution. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh Public Schools opened their buildings to a small group of students today. It's the first time they've been open since March. The number of students heading back is just a small fraction of the student body. The goal is to help special education and English language students struggling with virtual lessons. Around 800 students return to school buildings today. The current plan is to continue online learning for the rest of the student body until at least January. And Seneca Valley Senior High School moved to remote learning for the entire week. At least eight students have tested positive for the virus there. And there is some promising news on the vaccine front. Pfizer says its phase three trial appears to be very effective. We're going to take a closer look at just how well that vaccine works ahead. And this is a live look at the big board on Wall Street. Stocks soaring to record highs on the heels of that vaccine announcement and Joe Biden's victory. President Biden is moving forward with his transition with 72 days before inauguration. And as we showed you minutes ago, his first priority is a COVID-19 task force. He's talking about that now. Meantime, President Donald Trump refuses to concede the election. NBC's Jay Gray is at the White House with a closer look at that and President-elect Joe Biden's response. As crews prepare the inaugural parade stage just outside the White House gates, President Trump continues to insist he should be the one standing there in January. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. He hasn't said anything publicly since late last week, but continues to make baseless claims to victory and of corruption and fraud in the election process on social media. His team now considering campaign-style rallies in areas where they are stepping up legal challenges, while even some of his closest allies are questioning the strategy. If your basis for not conceding is that there was voter fraud, then show us. We can't back you blindly without evidence. President-elect Joe Biden isn't waiting on evidence or a concession. Our work begins with getting COVID under control. Biden meeting today with doctors and scientists creating a COVID-19 task force and attack plan. With the virus spreading out of control, more than 100,000 new cases daily for the last week and climbing. We're also getting an idea of his goals for his first 100 days in office, which includes rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement and the World Health Organization. Also high on that list, trying to heal a divided nation. Jay Gray, NBC News, the White House. Election workers in Allegheny County are sifting through the remaining 7,200 ballots in front of observers. These are part of the 29,000 misprinted ballots sent to voters last month. They're being sorted into two piles, one for ballots for which resolution is not possible and one for ballots that will require further research. At last check, elections officials are currently going through the envelopes of ballots surrendered at polling places to pull any of the ballots returned by a voter who received an incorrect or corrected ballot. Pittsburgh Mayor Bill Peduto announced his budget plan this morning, and he says the city is close to having to make a very difficult decision. The proposal is $590 million and does not include any tax hikes. But Mayor Peduto says he's trying to avoid layoffs because of the pandemic. The city, he says, will need federal money, though, to avoid that. It should never have to come to this, and it breaks my heart to say. But if we do not get aid from Washington, it will require the city to make $25.6 million 
in additional personnel cuts starting July 1. So how does that add up? Well, the mayor says without the federal money, 634 city workers could be furloughed. One person was taken to the hospital after a crash. This was the scene on Foster Road North for sales around 530 this morning. We saw some poles and wires down and power was out to about 160 customers. Police in Aliquippa are asking for help solving a bizarre cold case murder. Police say this man, Bradley Stewart, was found dead five years ago. Police say he was chased up Carroll Street by a crowd and someone opened fire. His body was found a few days later. Before the shooting, investigators say Stewart robbed and attacked a teenager in Ambridge and another teen in Aliquippa. Crime Solvers is offering a $5,000 reward for information about his death. Firefighters were called to the same business in Westmoreland County four times this past weekend. G&H Automotive in Mount Pleasant caught fire Saturday afternoon. These are pictures that the East Huntington Fire Department shared with Channel 11. You can see heavy smoke visible from many miles away. Additional tanker trucks were called in because the closest hydrant was down the road. Crews were called back three more times between Saturday night and Sunday morning. The fire chief says two of those return trips were because the fire rekindled. No one was hurt. The state police fire marshal is investigating the cause. With people stocking up for the holidays, the shortages, will they get worse in the coming weeks? 11 Investigates' Angie Moreski takes a look at what may be hard to find. Plenty of sunshine out there with the temperature already at 70 degrees. We are on our way up to record territory this afternoon. I'll go over your forecast highs and we'll take a look at when rain moves into the picture. And remembering Alex Trebek, next, a local woman who is a Jeopardy contestant shares her memories. For decades, we welcomed him into our homes. Today, the country is mourning the loss of Jeopardy host Alex Trebek. It's been 20 months since Trebek was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Earlier this year, Channel 11 went behind the scenes and spoke with him one-on-one. -on -one. 
I had no idea that Jeopardy would become as popular as it is. To me, it was just another job. And it became so much more. Channel 11 Serafina James talked to a local woman who was a Jeopardy contestant. And she shared her memories and a message to those fighting cancer. Let's make it a true daily double, Alex. All right, for the lead. Connellsville native Dr. Lindsay Schultz, a former Jeopardy! champion, is mourning the loss of the game show's popular host, Alex Trebek, after his very public 20-month battle with pancreatic cancer. We knew something like this might be inevitable, but that it turned so quickly. Lindsay Schultz is from Pittsburgh. The Carnegie Mellon grad tells me she's thankful she had a chance to meet Trebek last year, noting how his presence off camera was just as captivating. You can feel he's a consummate professional. He was just very elegant and very dapper, but he also had a wicked sense of humor. Upon learning about Trebek's diagnosis, Schultz began raising money for cancer research. Now during Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, Schultz is informing others about the early warning signs of the disease. You have a, a something called jaundice, of yellowing in your eyes or your skin. Oftentimes, it's, it's a family member or a friend or even someone on FaceTime will catch that before you do. And Schultz isn't the only one providing support to those with cancer. The biggest thing is knowing that you're not alone. While Jeopardy! fans rallied around Trebek during his battle, organization Our Clubhouse is doing the same for local cancer patients and their families by providing free support, care, and hope. We are we do daily chats, we have yoga classes, we, we are reaching out so that people aren't feeling isolated. We know cancer is very isolating. So being here through the pandemic I think is just a reflection of, of the organization and who we are. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time. See you then. In Pittsburgh, Serafina James, Channel 11 News. Alex Trebek, I, I think it's so interesting. She called him an elegant man. That's mm -hmm. how I've always thought of him, too. Legendary. It's going to be hard to replace him. Jeopardy! announced episodes he taped will continue to air through Christmas Day, saying his last day in the studio was not too far back, just October 29th. You can watch our entire one-on-one -on -one interview with Trebek from earlier this year on our website and the WPXI News app. This year, about 45,000 Americans will die from pancreatic cancer, and that includes Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Congressman John Lewis. Perhaps you've lost a loved one. So why is this cancer so devastating? During its early stages, there are usually no symptoms, and once the symptoms begin, the cancer is usually far along. About 95% of people with pancreatic cancer end up passing away from it. The other problem is there's really no routine screening like there is for breast cancer or colon cancer. Talk to your doctor about getting a screening if there is a family history, if you are a man over 55 or have diabetes and are over the age of 50. More than 200 new banners are on utility poles throughout Leechburg and Gilpin. The Hometown Heroes program allows families to buy a banner to honor loved ones. An organizer of the program told the Trib it's a true testament to the people in town that are honoring their veteran relatives. There will be no Veterans Day parade in downtown Butler this week. The director of Veterans Services told Butler Radio they could not get a permit. There will still be a ceremony at Diamond Park on Wednesday. Today, Fox Chapel will hear from neighbors at a private meeting about changing the names of some roads. The township is considering renaming places that use the word squaw. Some consider the word a slur against Native American women. Leaders invited residents to speak during today's private meeting before a vote next week. The township will also consider sending out a survey to residents. Ohio Pile State Park is reminding everyone to leave the park the way they found it. Last week, volunteers spent time cleaning up spray-painted political messages and obscenities left in two areas of the park. This is the fourth time now this year that crews have cleaned up graffiti. They're also seeing a lot of trash left around the park. Pittsburgh police say a local business was illegally selling baby turtles. Those turtles were less than two months old. Police found them while searching the business on Brownsville Road. It's not clear which business was searched. Humane Animal Rescue is now taking care of the turtles. Your severe weather, Team 11 forecast. 
Beautiful weather out there today. We have temperatures that are already in the 70s across the area. It is currently 70 degrees in Pittsburgh. We've got mid 70s out in Beaver. You're going to want to get outside and enjoy this weather. This is about a week straight where we have gone without any rainfall. The winds are light as well. So if you have any plans to head outdoors and you were worried about something you were doing with the big wind that may affect it, you don't have to worry about that today. Winds right around three to eight miles per hour are expected through the rest of the afternoon. So if you are heading out, maybe you're walking your dog, temperatures will be climbing into the mid 70s. And by evening, they're still going to be in the upper 60s and then falling into the low 60s through 8 p.m. So we are still looking at a mild evening. Maybe you're heading out to dinner, definitely will not need a heavy coat. Take a look at an air quality alert that we have that should actually say Monday, not Sunday. That's unhealthy for sensitive groups. That means if you are elderly, you're younger, you have asthma, any trouble breathing, you want to limit your exposure outside today. We are looking at potential records today and tomorrow. Today will be close, if not tying the record. Forecast high is 75. The record is 76 back from the late 1800s. And then Tuesday, uh, we are forecasting 77. The record is 73 from 1939. So incredible warmth and feeling more like mid-September. Tonight's going to be chilly, though. 48 degrees won't be as cold as what we've had over the weekend mornings, but still chilly enough for a jacket before you head out the door on Tuesday. Clear sky will roll and we're going to have temperature right around 48 degrees in Pittsburgh. Tomorrow afternoon, though, the temperatures will be climbing and even warmer than what we'll have out there today. I believe upper 70s across the area, about 77 in Pittsburgh. We'll have some fair weather clouds tomorrow, but beautiful weather to get outside and enjoy. The winds will be light out of the south at 3 to 10 miles per hour. We are still tracking that rain. It's slated to move in early Wednesday morning. Here's the latest timing I have on our storm tracker maps. You're going to see that rain coming across the area for your Wednesday morning commute. We will have pockets of moderate to heavy rain that's showing up in yellow, orange, and red on our map. Even some thunder is possible. Analyzing some latest data, it looks like some of the heaviest totals will be across our far southeastern counties. And I'm going to have a look at our rainfall forecast coming up in the next half hour. You don't want to miss it because these are some impressive totals coming in off the data today. Five day forecast with your weekend always in view. The temperatures will dip a bit on Wednesday, but it'll still be mild at 68. Mild actually considering the average is the low 50s this time of year. We're looking at highs near 60 both Thursday and Friday and your weekend is always in view. Dry on Saturday with a high near 60, lots of sunshine. Showers will once again return as we head into Sunday. We actually have one lady call in who was getting ready to give money to whoever called. Another phone scam, this one targeting a local magistrate's office. How crooks are trying to trick people into paying up. First, though, some encouraging news on a coronavirus vaccine. Just how well one of the vaccines being tested works.
Promising news today in the race to develop a coronavirus vaccine. Drugmaker Pfizer says early data shows its COVID-19 vaccine has an effective rate of more than 90%. Yeah, really encouraging. Our Jacqueline Fell has reaction from Capitol Hill. This is definitely encouraging news in the fight against the virus, which is spiking again across the country. Pfizer said this early peak at the data suggests a shot could be 90% effective at preventing COVID-19. This puts the company on track to apply later this month for emergency use approval from the FDA. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's top infectious disease expert, called the results just extraordinary. He said not very many people expected it would be that high. The head of Pfizer says he thinks Americans won't have to worry about the cost. I think the vaccine will be available for free to all American citizens. I believe most countries will do the same. We are giving it to the government at quite low price. Um, so I think every American will have access to it. President Trump tweeting this morning, calling it such great news. President-elect Joe Biden called it cause for hope, but added the end of this battle is still months away. The company says it expects to have one billion doses ready to go by next year. Reporting outside Washington, Jacqueline Fell, Channel 11 News. The Hyperloop could be the transportation of the future. How the first test ride with people on board went. With people stocking up for the holidays, will shortages get worse in coming weeks? 11 Investigates' Angie Moreski takes a look at what may be hard to find.
The state is taking emergency action on unemployment, saying that they know people fell through the cracks. The Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry is temporarily expanding its ability to backdate unemployment compensation on claims from six weeks to up to 52 weeks. This change happened over the weekend. It will allow the department to help people who attempted to file claims during the first weeks of the pandemic but were not able to get help because of the surge in claims. In just 21 days between March 15th and April 4th, the state received more than a million new applications for unemployment benefits. If you go to the grocery store every week, you may have noticed some things are getting hard to find again. Yeah, we're talking about everything from cleaning supplies to paper goods and even certain foods. Love Investigates' Angie Moreski went to a local supermarket to find out what you need to know to get what you need. This is the hardest hit aisle in the store. No matter where you go, when you go, you're going to see some empty shelves and items out of stock. All the cleaners, like these guys, they're all, they've been out of stock since this whole crazy craziness started. The owner of Sprankles Market in Leechburg says manufacturers have ramped up production to help. Order more, order more, order more. But whether it's Sprankles, Target, Walmart, Giant Eagle, Coons, or others, it can be hit or miss to find the exact product you want. Mostly just to disinfect wipes when you go to get disinfected. The toilet paper shortage isn't completely wiped out, but it is a lot better. Now, the harder to find paper products, in some cases, paper towels. Luckily, if you're willing to settle for store or generic brands, you can generally find something close to what you want. You just think differently and use something else. Specialty products, though, are tougher to find and may require a visit to multiple stores. Mold and no. mold cleaner? Uh -uh. Can't get it. No. You might have noticed certain varieties of soup are also hard to find, like vegetable. The reason? A worldwide shortage of aluminum cans. To prioritize the demand, manufacturers have shifted production away from less popular items. Like uh, Cherry Red, uh, Cherokee Red. They don't make it anymore. They quit making it because they didn't have enough containers and it was a slower item. And with more people baking and cooking at home. Seems like stuff, some stuff is really out. Garlic and onions. Wow, look. There's been a run on spices lately. The brand name Libby. Mm -hmm. It, uh, it's been empty forever. With people stocking up for the holidays, expect some shortages to get worse. There's your turkey breast. Your best to get the staples early before supplies run out. My supplier told me that there's no more turkeys to get be had. And when it comes to ham for Christmas, expect to pay more this year. Last year it was $1.69. This year, we're looking at surveys at 259. As long as I have a turkey, you know, for Thanksgiving and ham for Christmas. Best advice, think ahead about what you need and buy it when you see it. And stores say, please don't hoard. You should be able to get what you need if you're flexible and willing to try alternate brands. Angie Moreski, Channel 11 News. State police showed up at hundreds of restaurants and bars last week to make sure they were following COVID-19 protocols. In Pittsburgh, they checked 182 businesses. Seven were handed notices of violations. That's strike one. If they find other violations again, the businesses could be fined or lose their liquor license. Eight other businesses received warnings relating to COVID-19 mitigation efforts. Durantum is looking to demolish more properties now that work is wrapping up on two dozen houses. Officials want to tear down more of the dilapidated buildings. Torrentum was awarded about $170,000 a year ago to tear down the properties. The work started about that time and now they're looking to demolish 15 to 25 more houses. A petition is circulating to stop plans for a new Dollar General store in Upper Burrell. The company wants to put one on Route 780 near Dewey Drive, but according to the Trib, Trib, excuse me, some residents don't want it built there. They say it's going to change the feeling of the neighborhood since most of it is residential. The township solicitor says, though, there's nothing that can stop the project. Well, it wasn't easy, and at times it hasn't been pretty, but the Steelers make franchise history with their best start of the season. After yesterday's game, Ben Roethlisberger laughed, saying at 30 years old, these nail biters are taking a bit of a toll. Channel 11's Jenna Harder has more from Ben and the Steelers.
I joke, I feel like I'm too old for this stuff. <laughs> My body gets worn down and, uh, you know, the emotional roller coaster that are these these games the last couple weeks. But we keep winning and having fun with these guys. That's all that matters. I just want to want to play and win for them. Since 1970, 27 teams have started the season 8-0. All of those teams made the playoffs and eight went on to win the Super Bowl. After his game winner, Eric Ebron told us, hey, at the end of the day, the Steelers are 8-0 for the first time ever. Every time we face adversity, we fight. Honestly, that's the only thing I can tell you. And I feel like it, it, it all comes together. And in the end, man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet against us. At the, at the end of the day, I just wouldn't bet against us. And in true Mike Tomlin fashion, he appreciated the moment, but has already turned the page to what's next. It's significant as we sit here today, but once I go to work tomorrow, it'll be less significant. We'll be singularly focused on on getting ready for our next AFC North opponent, and that's life. Uh, I'm appreciative of it, but we're not going to dwell on it. It was Jenna Harner reporting both Tomlin and Roethlisberger were asked if there's an extra target on their backs because of their record, and they both said they're the Pittsburgh Steelers. Everyone knows what that means. They're going to get people's best shot. We actually have one lady call in who was getting ready to give money to whoever called. Another phone scam, this one targeting a local magistrate's office. How crooks are trying to trick people into paying up. People have been calling this Butler County office thinking that a family member has been arrested. Channel 11's Amy Marcinkowitz found out someone spoofed the magistrate's phone number. And the people on the other line are just trying to scare you out of your money. On a typical day, this office gets about 50 calls. Take a look at this day and this day. 800 and then almost 1,000. District Run City, how may I help you? For the past few days, the phones have been ringing off the hook here at Magistrate Court in Evans City, Butler County, but the calls have nothing to do with the court schedule. In the last 
three days, we've logged in on our phone system over 4,000 calls to our office. His court office number got spoofed, a scammer using a Butler County elected office's phone number to threaten and scare. Surprisingly, the judge says not many from our area. Believe it or not, only one from the local area was Cranberry. The rest of them were from Ohio, Alaska, uh, California, Colorado. Yesterday was Florida Day. Uh, almost all of our calls came in from Florida. After getting those typical spam calls, your grandson's in jail or in the hospital, send money, callers would redial the number. The judge and his office staff answered every one of them, informing folks of what was going on. Uh, we actually had one lady call in who was getting ready to give money to whoever called to get her son out of jail. Amy Marcinkowitz, Channel 11 News. Amy tells us after three days, the calls started to subside. The office is getting just a few uh, on Friday. A different kind of holiday season. Now Thanksgiving and Christmas traditions are being reimagined. Anyway. Supply problems could delay the release of the new iPhone 12. There's a shortage of power supply chips, and the pandemic is part of the problem. It has disrupted Apple's supply chain. Apple is using some components from iPads to keep production going. The new phones are supposed to be available to order beginning on Friday. With a spike in coronavirus cases worldwide, families are rethinking their holiday plans, while organizers for annual events have already made changes to decades-old traditions. NBC's Dan Sheneman has more. Home for the holidays has new meaning this year. Just saying to myself, honestly, might make it a virtual Christmas. COVID-19 continues to change the way we live and how we celebrate. 
One annual staple you can count on is the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. We will still be doing uh, a live parade on Thanksgiving Day, but it's going to be uh, shortened and it's going to be something that's only for the viewers at home. The scaled down parade will feature new balloons and floats, including one celebrating the star of the day. This year we are doing an entire spectacular around Turkey. Brookfield Properties has worked for months to ensure the visiting Santa will be safe. You know, kind of put that natural barrier in front of him to keep them six feet away, but then yet create a fantastic photo to capture that memory for the families. For parents who are not comfortable venturing out, virtual visits with the big guy are available at jinglering.com. Um, when mom and dad book the session, you'll be able to tell us a little bit about the kids, their names, you know, what are they doing really well at home. Happy New Year! Though Times Square will be closed to the public, organizers thought it was important to continue the ritual that happens on New Year's Eve. We did make a decision that no matter what, the New Year's Eve ball would drop. A year we will not soon forget. We all are really one, going to want to say goodbye to 2020 and hello to 2021. Dan Shettleman, NBC News. Giant Eagle is hiring. They're looking for 600 workers. They're having hiring events all this week for permanent full and part-time positions. Candidates could be hired right on the spot. Several Giant Eagle locations are hosting events today from 1 to 6. The post office is also looking for seasonal and permanent jobs. A drive through job fair will be held tomorrow at the Wexford Post Office on Perry Highway. That will be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. There are a number of positions available, and we're told the pay ranges from $16 to $18 an hour. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Beautiful out there today, lots of sunshine. The current temperature is at 70 degrees, and we have a very light wind out of the south, which is a warming wind, and why we have the nice weather today. Well, it's been about a week since we've had any rainfall here in the area, so I wanted to update you on where we stand for our autumn precipitation. I've uh, changed the word to precipitation from rainfall because now we're getting into that time of year where snow melt is included, and we did have some snow recently. So 4.31 inches, that is how much precipitation we've seen. You can see the average. We're actually below average by almost two inches across our area. We know that parts of the region are also still facing a moderate drought, including those of us down in Washington Green County is also up in Indiana County. Well, today it is a great day to get outside. Maybe you want to have lunch on the patio. We're looking at a high temperature in the mid 70s, which will be close to that record high I mentioned earlier, which is 76 degrees from the late 1800s. Yard work forecast over the next couple of days. We have fantastic weather today. Good weather tomorrow as well. Even warmer weather, by the way. But then rain will be moving in as we head into early Wednesday, and then it will continue into the day Wednesday. So Wednesday is not a good day to do any outdoor yard work. However, Thursday, nice weather will return, although it will be a little bit cooler out there. Take a look at our morning planner. The temperatures will be chilly, but not as cold as what we've had over the last couple of mornings. This morning's low is 41. We're looking at about 48 degrees tomorrow morning, so you're going to need a jacket, but it's that crazy time of year where you won't even need one in the afternoon because look at these numbers. 77, my forecast time in Pittsburgh tomorrow, 79 in Washington and 78 in Beaver, looking to break the record high temperature of 73. That rainfall I spoke of, it comes in early Wednesday morning. It continues throughout the day, and the model data shows that anywhere from about a half an inch to one and a quarter inches is possible. I do expect some of those higher totals, though, to be across our southeastern counties. Localized flooding may be a, an issue. However, widespread flooding at this point is not going to be a factor, I don't think, because it has been so dry across our area. The latest on Ada, it has been pounding parts of Florida over the weekend. In fact, South Florida, Broward County particularly, picking up about a foot of rain from this storm. It moved over the Keys, and you can see where the center of circulation is. I've got it highlighted there on your screen, and the model data has it doing something wacky. This thing is going to be moving toward the southwest, then kind of curving back up to the north. The National Hurricane Center says it's going to recurve up toward the north northeast and eventually perhaps make another landfall in Florida. But I've been also looking at some other data that kind of pushes it back out west into the central Gulf of Mexico. So it's something to bear watching if you have any family and friends that live in that area. We'll keep you posted. Five day forecast here back home locally. You can see the rain midweek and then the cool down that follows temperatures near 60 Thursday, Friday and Saturday and more rain on your Sunday. Thank you.
Thanks, Danielle. Still ahead, the future first dog that will make history when Joe Biden moves into the White House residence. First, though, local steals and deals. I have, interestingly enough, one of my new favorite things. This is Calming Heat by Sharper Image, and it does so much more than a regular heating pad. And at first I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I tried it and I went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the deal. Number one, it's a heating pad, right? If you have aches and pains, you overdid it, your back, your shoulders, your knees, right? There's nothing better than a heating pad, but most heating pads just kind of sit there. This one drapes over and it has weight. It's filled with these weighted clay beads. So the heat really absorbs and it just, you feel the heat so much more. It makes such a difference. And I love that, but it also has, wait for it, because here's the cool part, massage. Now, I have three different settings for heat, three different settings for massage, and by the way, automatic timer turnoffs for the massage and the heat so you're good with safety. Because of the fact that it's a great size, when you put it over your shoulder, it covers a lot of your shoulder. If you put it on your back, it covers a lot of your back. When I put it on my lap, down my legs when I'm watching TV, it covers a lot of space. So this is one of those things that can just be calming and soothing at the end of a long day, or just because it's that zen moment when it's cold outside and you're toasty, warm, and massaged inside. It's Calming Heat by Sharper Image. I love the concept. And by the way, 20% off on localsteels.com. Virgin's Hyperloop track in Vegas had its first test ride with passengers. The Hyperloop uses magnets and vacuum tubes. The goal is to reach speeds of 600 miles per hour without using too much energy. This weekend, it only did about 100 miles per hour. It's not able to get up to the higher speeds just yet due to the length of the track. There are, of course, plans to build a 
Piper Loop in Pittsburgh. Once complete, you could take a 30 minute trip to Columbus and it would only take an hour to get to Chicago. There will be a dog in the White House again. And when Joe Biden becomes president in January, a member of his family will make history. The Biden's dog, Major, will become the first rescue dog to live in the White House. The Bidens adopted the German Shepherd from the Delaware Humane Association two years ago. The other future first dog, Champ, joined the Biden family in 2008 and has previous White House experience. That's all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast is tonight at 5. You can get breaking news updates anytime at our streaming apps. Just search WPXI on Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Enjoy.